Hey, we're Jay and Jamie, and we make tons of spooky, awesome stuff. For the first time ever, we're gonna give you a tour of our entire Halloween setup with all the big characters and props and stuff we've made. And as of about a month ago, we are full time on YouTube, which means we're gonna be making videos all year long, even after Halloween. So stay tuned because we have some important questions for you. First, we're gonna check out everything in the daytime so you can kind of see how it's set up and placed and things like that. And then we're gonna turn off the sun, turn on the lights, and check it out at night. Welcome to Oakview Cemetery. All of our decorations are in the front yard and we have it set up as a walk-by so that people can come by and check it out anytime they want. We have a ton of fun arranging things and putting a lot of detail into the setup so that there's something interesting everywhere you look. Almost everything you see here is something we've made or made over and we have a YouTube video for it. So let us know in the comments how many Wicked Makers projects you spot. This year was interesting because we made a lot of very big things. We reinvented some props from Spirit Halloween and Home Depot, some big animatronics, and they're all very large. So we had to kind of rethink how we position all of our stuff. So one of them was Lord Raven, who we turned into sort of like a dark necromancer, raising and controlling his, his army of giant skeletons back here. So this used to be Lucky Bottoms from Spirit Halloween, and we turned him into the Pennywise spider crab from the movie It. Basically a clown plus a spider, pure terror. <laughs> And this is little Georgie, we made him a friend. This is just a mannequin that we built and put some clothes on it. Normally he has a balloon, but it is very windy out right now and it keeps blowing away. So that'll be on there later. The two of them work really well together. This was a skeleton from the store that we kind of broke into different pieces and repositioned into a cool dynamic pose. Also, we've got our tombstones that we made. We also got two giant skeletons, which we were intending to do a makeover on, but we didn't get quite that far. So you can look forward to that for next year. This was the empty soul girl on a swing. This is actually the first makeover we ever did and we turned her into sort of like Samara from the ring type of thing. It's absolute nightmare fuel at night. Over here we have like our little witch vignette. We have our rocking chair witch. When she started she was a prop from Home Depot who was kind of silly looking and now she's glamorous and awesome. And of course, the bubbling witch's cauldron right next to her. So as you approach the door, we have our Minecraft spider, which we built from scratch. This is actually the same size it would be in the game if you were in the game, you know what I mean. And then over by the door, we actually built a coffin as the entryway. So the kids have to walk through the coffin to get their candy. And then the sitting scarecrow, the scariest thing we have, will be inside the coffin on Halloween. We got this guy from Spirit Halloween and he basically used to look like the scarecrow from The Wizard of Oz and we turned him into the most terrifying thing. You have to earn your candy at our house. <laughs> so we used to have a more cohesive theme for the haunt. It was kind of like a New Orleans swampy graveyard scene. But since we've added so much stuff, we've had to make like sections like, you know, the graveyard here and spider here and pirate party there, which I actually love because now I don't feel limited with what we're making. Since we added all these characters, there's so many things to plug in now. I think we have like 50 or 60 plugs out here in the yard. Because you've got the characters which need to be plugged in, and they all have lights on them too, so that you can actually see them in the dark. So there's like tons of lights, tons of other stuff going on. There's so many cords, you guys. So just for safety, we have to make sure they're all outdoor cords. We have to make sure that they're going to different circuits so that we're not like overloading anything. Not a big deal, but something to think about. So speaking of lights, we have the biggest mishmash of lighting methods here like I've ever seen. So we've got these. These are just little spotlights. And what I did is I put a cup over them and there's some lighting gels on top to make it colored. And then I spray painted it. Plastic cup and lighting gels, super high tech. <laughs> it works so well though. And we've had those for like seven years. Yeah, they never die. I think it costs us like a few dollars. These are new. These are like 20 watt floodlights. These are awesome because they'll light a bigger area for you and we can change the light with the remote control. And then finally we have our moving lights. So these are these big guys and they have like usually something inside that's rotating. These look really neat, but we just don't want them all over the haunt because I think it's a little too distracting, but in like certain areas to spotlight something or to give something the illusion of movement, they're really cool. We have a million questions about how we lit the chicken wire ghost. And that is how. We have one of those rotating lights and that just makes her look like she's moving and undulating and really creepy. 
So back here hidden behind everything, we have our fog machine going into a fog chiller. And what the chiller does is it makes the fog super cold so that as it rolls out, it stays low to the ground. So coming out of the fog chiller, we have it going into this drainage hose. And this is cool, it has all these little holes in it. And basically the fog just sort of seeps out of all these little holes. And we tape up the other end so that's the only way it can escape. And that helps it kind of disperse across the yard. This is the dark portal and in here at night, there's a big projection. We typically take this stuff down during the day because it just kind of looks weird and you can't project during the day. But also look at this. A mighty beast has been summoned through the portal. So as of September, we've been fortunate enough to make content creation our full-time job. It is amazing and a little bit scary. One of the best things about it is we'll be making videos all year long now consistently and not just like a few here and there like we have in the past. We're definitely gonna do a lot more makeovers and like big characters like we have been this season. I think we're gonna explore some other holidays and probably like some movie and game characters and stuff like that too. So if you have any ideas, let us know. We'll definitely keep doing original projects too, not just the makeovers, but whatever we make, we'll have a spooky twist. So during the Halloween season, we were able to do videos every single week like all the way since mid-July basically but we're probably not gonna do that after Halloween. To do weekly videos we actually pre-filmed a whole bunch during the summer and it was a crazy pace. A lot of the stuff we make is very big like it takes longer than a week to make it so if we want to keep doing big stuff then it's gonna take a little longer than every single week. So for now we're gonna shoot for one to two videos a month until we figure out a pace that really works for us but when Halloween season comes around we will definitely start doing the weekly videos again. So for this to be our full-time jobs we have to think about things like how do we make money? How do we support our family making videos. Well, there's a few ways that works. Part of it is you'll start to see sponsors on the videos. That helps us out a lot. Part of it is we have things like merchandise, like shirts and stuff like that. But the best way that you can support us directly is through things like our Patreons. You get access to stuff like digital files and PDF plans for projects. You get sneak peeks on stuff that we're working on. It's a great way to support what we're doing and you get some cool stuff. So many of you guys are already doing that, which has been a big step towards us being able to do this. And we're very, very thankful for that. Also, if you wanna be a bigger part of just the community, we have amazing groups on Discord and and on Facebook. So you can find links for both of those in the description below. So before the nighttime tour, I just wanna to say thanks for an amazing season. We have one more Halloween video coming out next week, which is a huge makeover, so don't miss it. Y'all are seriously the best community we could ever ask for. Thank you so much for allowing us to do this all year. Thank you for watching this video, and until next time, stay wicked. Thank <laughs> you.